So at this point, we've added a lot of functionality to our app. Um, one of the big things is the PouchDB database. If we go back to the documentation, there's a part in there that says what's the minimum requirement to run Pouch on a device. And we saw also from the sh social sharing app that it said that it also needs a certain version of Android or higher. So these are things that we should take into consideration. We uh, can have our app downloaded by a variety of operating system versions you know, iOS 7, 10, whatever, Android uh, 4, 5, 7, whatever. So if we do a little bit of programming here to determine what device, what the device is capable of, and then it can activate or deactivate features that that device cannot handle, that'd be a good thing. Um, some things might not be usable by the user, and other things, yes. So, for example, if someone with uh, Android 3.0 downloads our app, they'd be able to use everything about it. Someone with Android 2.0, they might not be able to use pouch DB aspects of it. So, at the very beginning, what we'll do is we'll do some checking in our, in our on-device ready. We'll do some checking to see what kind of device are we running, and then what kind of version of the device, and then show or hide or activate or deactivate features that are not available for that platform. So we're going to do all of this before the hiding of the splash screen. I want all of this calculation and stuff to happen before the splash screen is, is hidden, because what we're going to do is deactivate uh, the feature of the of pouch. Remember right on the home screen we have my classes. Well that's not going to work for people that are using Android 2.0 for example and other versions of iOS. I want that button to disappear. I don't want to remove the functionality. It'll still be in there but there's just going to be no way for them to get to it because that button will be gone. So before the splash screen give yourself some space We're going to create a few variables. First, we'll start with OS version, OS VER. This is the version of the operating system. Uh, actually, OS VER. Yeah, OS VER, that's fine. And then equal to device.version. So, device.version, we've got the um, Cordova plugin that checks features of the device. We've got uh, give me the version of the device, comma, because I also want to translate that to OS ver int, the integer version, the whole number version. Um, this will give me maybe like uh, Android 4.4.1, and I just really need to know Android 4. So we're going to sort of round it up. We're going to just get the integer version. Um, so we'll change this over to, I believe also this gives you a string, um, the string 4.4 rather than the number 4.4. So we're going to parse int, parse an integer. We're going to make a number, a real number, out of a string that looks like a number, which will be OS ver, and then comma 10, base 10. I want to get a number in base 10 out of that OS version that is a string. And I also, while I'm here, I want to store OS name. What's the name? What internally uh, am I, what device's operating system name am I working with? So that's device.platform. And then we'll end the line there. Semicolon. <clears throat> For curiosity, before we do anything really interesting here, let's output this to the console. We've got three pieces of info, so we'll do three of those. Dev version is OS ver. Um, 
parsed is OS for int dev platform is OS name. So this would be something that you can check on the um, device, real or virtual. I'm going to get that running in the background so I can see it on a real device. But our concept is here, I want to gather a little bit of information about the device. Once I'm seeing what kind of information I'm getting, I can make some conditional statements. We can do some if-else statements or a switch statement or just anything that will let us make decisions based on the data that we're getting. I'd like to see some of this data first and then we'll do it. I think we'll, we might use a switch for this, although if else would also work. And so uh, I'll get some number, some number like number that I then need to convert to a number, and then the platform of the device. It's coming up on my real device. I'm going to open this up on my dev tools here. So, dev version in my case is 5.1, but it's, uh, it's not a number. So it's been parsed to just be a 5. I'm dropping the point 0.1 if I really needed to also have those um, bits of that version number, I'd have to parse it in a different way. Uh, and then the platform is Android. So if I was running this on iOS, I would get a different string of a version number, and then that would be parsed, and then it would say the platform is Android. That's what's happening there. OS version, the parsed version, the integer version, and then the OS name. So knowing that we're getting that data, here's how we can start to then choose, okay, if we've got, if this uh, app is running on this device, do this. If it's running on that device, do something else. Next line, we'll do a switch. With a switch, we can have different sorts of um, conditions that can happen. We have several conditional statements. I often use if-else statements, but switch statements are also very useful. Um, we've got a switch that we're checking for, and we've got a case, ABC, where something happens break. We've got another case that could happen, x, y, z, colon, x, x, break. We have as many cases as we want. and then a default case at the end with something else to happen if I didn't think of all the possibilities. So my switch is going to be based on first what operating system we're running. We're storing the operating system in OS name. So we're going to evaluate what's OS name. The case then could be, quote, Android. What well, could be an OS name would be Android. And we have iOS as another case. We have Windows. Maybe there's other operating systems. So the default, I'll put some console, even though I have it out up at the top, I'll still also put here um, maybe like non standard OS and 
just output what that is. OS name. So we have a block in the case of Android and a block in the case of iOS. And I got have multiple lines of code here, multiple statements. So what I, what I want to say with um, Android is we need to target at least version 4 inclusive in order for PouchDB to work. This will then work as an if else statement. So within the Android case, we will further test here. Is it the right version of the operating system? If it is, carry on. If not, we need to make a change. Our condition further deep here is we've got OS ver int greater than and equal to 4. And or equal to. So you saw in my console output I had 5.1, which is rounded to 5. Obviously, 5 is greater than 4. If I was running an Android 4.1, that would put it as 4, and that would still work. It's equal to. If I've got Android 3.8, well, that becomes Android 3, which falls below my threshold, and then else executes. In the if portion, if it is the proper version, all we really need to do is have some console output, something like OS or Android OS greater than 4. If you want, you can output that. But nothing happens to the user. This is just the, in the console for the developer. For our testing purposes, we might not even really need it in the final build. What will happen, though, under else, if the um, OS version is not high enough. So console log Android version less than 4. OS ver int. And for the user, we then have to deactivate the button on screen We call it when we were able to go to my classes. BTN, not sure if my classes. Oh, well, we never gave it. We never gave it a uh, an ID. Okay. So what we'll have to do is uh, do it in two places. So um, there's that element in the HTML. We haven't given it an ID, so we're, we're going to say that'll be btn classes, and then dot hide. The jQuery method. Get that, uh, take that object and hide it. So just don't let, just don't give the ability for for users to even go to that screen. That functionality is not going to be useful for them. Um, the PouchDB website says this shouldn't really be run under Android 4, below than 4. So we're going to hide the button that has that feature. We never named it, so I'm going to save the I'm going to save the um, that. But actually, since most likely Pouch has been working this whole time, I'm going to make this very obvious. I'm going to say OS ver greater than 99. There's no such thing as an Android version that high. So definitely we will trip the else condition. I want to see if the button gets hidden. My Android is 5.1. 5 is less than 99, so it'll trip the hide. Further, I need to go back to the HTML. We need to go up to the spot where we've got that button, line 61. That's where I've got my classes. That button, we need to turn it off. Well, it needs an ID href pound classes at 
the end ID BTN classes. So now that object in the HTML has a unique name in order for the JavaScript to find it and then invoke hide method. I'm not done yet, uh, but this pseudocode right here is going to cause me problems. I'll comment it out. <coughs> So I'm going to set a very high bar for, for Android. Then we'll do iOS and such. But here I'm setting myself up that definitely I'm going to fail the test. And we'll see after I run my device. Right now I do have the My Classes button ready to use before my latest code, and once that deploys, it should hide the button. Here we go, so... Splash screen, it already processed it by now. Oops, I mistyped something, line 28. Oh, yes. Uh, that should have been a colon, not a semicolon. So the syntax for switch is we got the switch keyword, what are you evaluating, curly braces, and within the curly braces you've got various cases. You've got a case colon, case colon, case colon, default colon. Then you've got each individual statement with its own terminating semicolons and a final break. So if we got to the Android case, it does all of this break and the rest is ignored. If we had the OS of uh, Windows, we would jump directly to case of Windows, run that code, and then break. Here's was launching again, splash screen, cuts out, and then the button is gone. There's no more button there about saving classes. That's what I want. So if I've got the wrong version of the operating system that is incompatible, I hide that button. There's no way for me to get that button. I've hidden it so I don't have that feature in my app. I would have to make a note in my store listing that says something like class saving feature available for Android 4 and up. Our app in theory could be downloaded by Android 2.0 users but all of its features won't be available and that's why we should display it in the description. Well, we know that this concept works, so I would put it back to 4. And for iOS, I need something very similar. OS for int greater than or equal to. For iOS, we need 7 and higher. Android is, is, is currently at uh, version 7, and um, iOS is at version 10. So nothing has to happen in the in the if portion. We can just say to ourselves compatible. And we know that else 
means it's not compatible, so we'll just simply do the same button hide. And for Windows, something very similar as well. I'll just copy that. I believe we need Windows 8 and higher. So thanks to the Cordova plugin of device features, we can then check versions of the device and platform to make decisions about what features are available to us. The social sharing plugin had some requirements like that as well. Works on Android 2.3 and higher in iOS 6 and higher. So if we wanted to also deal with those, we would have to add more checks here or get more creative and, and check the check the compatibility. Okay, so at this point I've, uh, I've tested it, I've forced the failure condition. Once I was able to get that, I want to put it properly, so this is what our, our check looks like. If that works, then um, we're going to build the process one final time. Um, I'm going to pause just for four minutes until eight to make sure that everyone is at approximately this point because then what we're going to do is build the project again. We're going to uh, look at handout eight one more time or nine, whatever it is, to build the release ready version. So just to make sure everyone was on the right page, I'll pause here for a couple of minutes. If anyone needs any help, call me over and then we're going to uh, build the final version.